forward to a good session today. Uh, so I'm going to talk about a game that I played some years ago. This was back in 2017, Gibraltar, so now going on five years. Um, but I uh, thought it was a very interesting game, and uh, against a strong young Hungarian I am, who I'm pretty sure is now a GM. Uh, but uh, there were some interesting moments. So started off as Queen's Indian, um, which is not something I play too often, but uh, it's probably... It's a reasonable um, option to try to play for a win with the black pieces if not necessarily because it's so sharp, but just because it sort of keeps pieces on the board. Um, and that's it avoids like it's super forcing theory, um, although in general nowadays, I don't think it's the best line out there. So this followed some mainland Queens Indian who knows what black's best move is here. Anybody know what black's best move is so far? Nobody has given me the best move. So a couple people have given me d5, but I'm very skeptical of um, of going for this structure right here. So say we go take, take, and bishop g2. Um, I don't love the way this has transpired. Um, because uh, white is going to have a better coordination. So Sanyana has it right. So Sanyana, do you want to share with us what you came up with? So um, the idea was bishop b4 check, and then um, if bishop d2, then to go back bishop b7, because the white bishop's a little bit misplaced on d2. Yeah, that's exactly right. So for example, if black plays d5 here, I'd actually be somewhat tempted to go knight b2 to bolster the center, and we go bishop, uh, fian Keto, both bishops and castle, and this is kind of nice for white. Bishop b4 check is aimed at disturbing white's coordination because if white goes knight bd2 here, I think bishop b7 is supposed to be an extremely annoying move. Um, I'm trying to recall exactly the the line, but the point is uh, bishop c3 is actually an extremely annoying threat to stop because bishop here is going to fail to knight e4. I don't know, maybe you can play rook g1 here, but already we're looking at no, this is bad news. Queen f6 and bishop d2 is threatened. and Yeah, so basically this bishop b4 check move makes knight bd2 extremely inconvenient to pull off after bishop b7. It's like if bishop g2, uh, just before white is in time to consolidate, black goes bishop c3 and wins the d4 pawn. So uh, this forces white to play bishop d2. But then what we see is that following bishop e7, uh, if white were to play bishop g2 here, there's a couple ways black could handle this position. Uh, but one way or another, he's going to play d5. He can choose whether to play c6 first or not. But I think the big thing is what's going to happen is white is going to be forced to take it or to go through some convulsions to keep the pawn defended. Um, while if the bishop were back on c1, then the knight would be able to come to d2 very easily. So for example, after c6, I'm pretty sure like one of the main moves here is bishop c3, which I believe I played against David Navarra. And um, I think is... Well, this is interesting and white has chances, but um, but the point is like this bishop was misplaced on d2 and we had to move it again. Anyhow, uh, in this game, white played knight c3, which sort of encur encourages black pretty hard to play d5 because we um, he's basically claiming that if we waste our time with c6 that white is going to play e4. Now, this is not necessarily the end of the world uh, for black. It's still probably playable, but I just played d5. So pretty quickly, we end up with this structure. And here, uh, normally this structure, I think, is a little bit dubious for black. But uh, there's a key difference here, which is that this pawn is on b3 rather than b2. So uh, that coupled with the fact that this bishop is on d2 rather than c1, where it could go to b2, where it would be quite nicely placed to uh, bolster a knight on e5 really nicely and also um, sort of dissuade black from playing c5 because on after d takes c5, the bishop will be on a nice open diagonal. But so this pawn on b3 also harms white's position in other ways. One is that in the event of rook c1, the rook will be less stable because of bishop a3. But I think much more importantly is this queen lacks access to the b3 and a4 squares, which is a good way to put further pressure on black's position. Anyhow, there continued bishop g2. Once we're out of the opening, white played knight e5, which came a bit quickly, but it's fine. Uh, bishop b7, bishop f4. All of this is pretty normal. All right, let's start here. Um, I'm going to give you guys first this position from the black side. Uh, and maybe I don't know what it was about. When I look at this position from black side now, it just sort of looks and feels unpleasant to me. During the 
at the time I didn't feel this way. Uh, I think I was a bit too, um, a bit uh, too trusting of the machine, but there's a typical maneuver that black should know. Uh, so what should black play here and why? Um, I was thinking knight f8, then maybe knight g6 or h6 to knight h7. Um, I like knight f8. I'm not sure about the whole h6, knight h7, or knight g6 business. Um, the knight, I think, will be quite nice on e6, where it will pressure the bishop on f4. And also, it sort of overprotects uh, c7, which is the weakest point. Anyhow, knight f8 is a pretty typical maneuver. And here, actually... Uh, my I was not. I'm not sure. I remember if I had prepared out this exact position, but I basically knew that you're supposed to go rook e8, knight f8, and bishop back to b7. And this was the way Black was supposed to set up his pieces at the start of the game, and then you sort of take it from there. Now here, actually, this is knight f8 was easy enough, but here White's best move. He has two reasonable moves in my opinion, and uh, they're not at all easy to come up with. They're very conceptual in their nature. So I'd like you guys to take some time and see if you can figure out what white should play. I was actually very impressed with what uh, my opponent played. So let's see what you can come up with here. And one thing to keep in mind is that while knight f8 is not a bad move, it's not even remotely subtle. It should be very, very obvious that my next move is going to be knight to e6. So you should keep that in mind. And any move that you decide to play for white, you should have at least some idea what you want to do in response to knight e6. Um, so Rio has an idea you want to share with us, Rio? Okay. Um... Uh, it's Ryo, not Rio. Oh, Ryo, sorry. Okay, so I want to play Bishop H3. I mean, I, I, I want to stop Knight E6. I mean, restricting the Knight. Are you going to take obviously... it if I come there? Yeah, I'm going to take it, and then I'm going to play Knight B5. Okay, this... I'm not totally sure I trust this for white. Um, But also, I think it's unnecessary. I think this Bishop on H3 is... Uh, sort of misplaced. So let's say I play c6 to start, which is a typical move in this structure to bolster the position in the center and stop white from playing knight b5. I think my next move is going to be bishop d6 and then knight e6, and I really don't think you want to take on e6 if I get to take back with the rook. Okay. And knight so I four. think bishop h3 sort of delayed the inevitable, but uh, I don't think it stops knight e6 on a permanent basis, and it doesn't seem great to me here so um, it's an interesting try but i'm not sure i love what about it knight a4 here i mean just targeting the pawn. okay i don't like the word just but um let's see knight a4 okay that i guess that makes some sense uh it's a little annoying um oh, clever Maybe I should play a6 instead, but still knight a4, huh? H3. It's not a dumb move at all. I just don't think it's best. Um, I don't want to do this. Okay, what if I just call your bluff? Let's let's see. Do I really believe this? I don't think I do. You're giving me a very big center, and I'm ready for a6 next. I don't think you're in time to cause any damage to the key squares. Um, it's, I don't think white's worse or anything, but this looks unclear, and I, yeah. I don't love giving up this bishop like that without getting something very direct for it. Um, I don't know. Uh, but I have some other moves coming in, so let's see. Uh, Narayan, you want to uh, share with us what you have in mind? Uh, okay. So I'm thinking, like, knight b5 could directly go um, for that weakness on c7. Uh the the pawns the pawns really bad and you have and you can have like um and you have three pieces pressuring the bishop which for now is covered by the knight uh and if you get that knight there you can add you can add a lot of pressure onto that pawn okay so knight b5 is a move that you cannot really think about in conceptual terms because 
Let's suppose after knight b5, I go knight e6 to defend this pawn. If I get to go a6 next move and kick your knight back to c3, you're going to end up, like, really feeling stupid. So if you want to play knight b5, and I'm not saying it's a bad move, you really need to be thinking in advance, after knight e6, what's going to happen? You have to be calculating very closely, because if you play knight b5, like... You have to, you're basically saying you have to crash through on c7 or you're going to end up retreating. So, uh, so did Narayan, did you have a, a thought as to what how you wanted to proceed at this point? I was thinking like a uh, knight to c6. Okay, maybe? yeah, this is the most critical move, but what did you calculate after that? Because it's a very forcing variation, and it's a few. I calculated, um, I was thinking about knight to c6. And how did you expect the game to proceed after that? It obviously doesn't end here. You don't end your calculation with everything hanging. Uh, bishop takes, rook takes. Um, okay. I was fine with uh, doubling the structure because it supports my sen it it supports the center and the bishop is blocked and d6 I can't get. Yeah, it. yeah. So here, I mean, you've weakened your structure, but you can at least claim that you're going to crash through on c7. I'm not sure I believe you after queen d7. Queen c2, maybe? Yeah, and then bishop c5, and it's starting to get messy. My suspicion is you're not better here. Uh, I think there's too much stuff hanging in your position. Yeah. But, uh, the, but yeah, you need to, if you want to play knight b5, you need to be calculating it very closely and figuring out what's going on. And here, after knight c6, uh, bishop c6 is a mistake. Black should play queen d7. Uh, and here, actually, white's in massive trouble because... Um, the knight on b5 is hanging and you have to do something with it and once you do something with it i get to take on f4 kick it away and then you've just compromised your structure for nothing there's hey. some calculation to be done but knight c7 fails to knight f4 because if knight a8 there's knight e2 and wait how about a4 in that position here okay i'll kick this knight yeah and then knight takes f4 and black ends up better you've compromised your king safety and not gotten anything to show for it so yeah, here there's um, there's the key point, though, is knight c7, knight f4, gf4, we have rook c8, and the knight gets trapped. So this had to be calculated, but it doesn't quite work out for white. So the first thing we realize is the most direct move here, knight b5, is not great. So the next thing is we need to think in more general strategic terms. Okay, so Roger has an idea. Roger, you want to share with us? Let's see what we have. Um... All right, Roger, what do you got? So I was thinking that in order not to get your structure compromised by the the knight on e6 i think it's a good idea to retreat the bishop either e3 or d2 i'm not sure which one is better but well white just played bishop d2 to f4 so going back to d2 seems pretty sad yeah maybe um, e3 is uh so say we go bishop e3 and i go knight e6 then i would i think i would go f4 yeah, a couple of people are giving this. One thing to know about f4 is as soon as you play f4, the c5 structure oh. becomes a lot less feasible for white. And the reason for that is like normally what we'd have in a structure like this one, let's say white goes like knight d3 and points out that you cannot play d4 because of this pin on the long yes. diagonal. This pawn on f4 really ruins your position. If it were back on f2, you wouldn't have nearly as many weaknesses, but here... Like, your contention is that these these hanging pawns are weak, but you have a backwards pawn on e2 as well, and a bunch of weak squares on the e-file, and the bishop on e3 is insecure. So in general, I think f4 tends to be very well met by c5. I suspect this position is no exception. And another thing is actually even I could think about taking with the bishop here, pointing out that this diagonal has now been weakened, and, like, this really doesn't look great. This knight is going to be unstable. It's The e3 square is beckoning. I'm worried about... A lot of stuff, d4, knight, d5 at some point once I've defended the bishop. So I don't love this plan of playing f4 at this particular point, especially now with a bishop on e3. If you're going to play f4, I think usually you want to just play e3 and then go e takes d4 back when black plays c5. So here the problem is in this position, what you really want is to go like bishop back to f2 and then e3 to support the pawns this way and claim that in the resulting symmetrical position, the knight on e5 will be good. The problem is you're not in time to play the bishop bishop f2 and e3 here d4 is hanging too fast so i think that bishop e3 is not great either um there's a couple but we, we're starting to get closer this bishop is going to get harassed we need to figure out where it belongs what square do we want to send it to so narayan says g4 but this feels very loosening and not like something i want to do 
Okay, so Alexander Wang has a good idea. You want to share with us, Alexander? Uh, so I want to play rook. So I want to move my bishop. Uh, c1, so I play rook c2. Yeah, I actually really like this plan. Uh, in general, I think probably if you're going to do this plan, bishop f4 was a wasted tempo. So like back here, white certainly could have done something like rook c1 and then rook c2 here to regroup like that. Uh, without burning a tempo on bishop f4. But still, given the way the game played out, oh, sorry, uh, given the way the game played out with knight e6 here and say bishop c1, I think this bishop coming to b2 actually makes a lot of sense uh, because it will overprotect the d4 pawn, bolster the d4 knight, so it's going to be harder, to, or the e5 knight, so it's going to be harder for like tactics to present itself. For example, like, um, maybe it's maybe bolstering the e5 knight is hard to explain, but like, let's say black wants like, um, I don't know, that's, that's stupid, but the bishop on b2 will be nice. Furthermore, one of black's main ideas in these structures is to play c5 and claim that he's getting dynamic counterplay from the hanging pawns. But in this kind of structure, the bishop on b2 gets really good. And furthermore, this rook on c2 often can just go to d2 and harass d5. Like here, even already, I'm not sure black is going to have such an easy time saving the d5 pawn. Uh, it's still a little overextended after queen c7, so it's not that easy. Maybe it's better to start with bishop b2 first to keep e5 protected and prophylaxis against queen c7, but life goes on. Anyhow, I think rook c2 is a very sensible move. I accidentally flashed the right one at you guys, uh, but does anybody see the best move here and or the move my opponent played and why it would make some sense? Okay, just telling me a move and not explaining why doesn't really let me believe that you've understood it, especially if I've been a dummy and accidentally flashed the move at you. Okay, so, yeah, a couple of people are giving me f3, e4. That's way too ambitious. Like, there's no way you're going to pull this off. I go knight e6 and attack this bishop, and you cannot go bishop d2. You will lose this pawn. If bishop e3, you're going to be... Um, blocking the e-pawn as soon as you touch the f-pawn as well c5 always seems annoying so someone's suggesting rookie one e4 in general guys a good rule of thumb is in all of these positions where um we have these bishops staring at each other like this e4 only ever makes sense for white as a plan if black has played c6 it's very rare that it it makes any sense if you haven't played c6 yet um uh, because then the bishop will be able to fight for the e4 square and potentially just trade everything off. You know what, like if black were to play c6 here, which is pretty stupid, you can easily see that we, when we get a structure like this one, the c6 pawn becomes a huge weakness and the e4 bishop is much more active than its counterpart on, um, what, on b7. But uh, if I don't play c6, like if I just go knight e6, first of all, like e4, you're not going to pull off. But let's just imagine that I don't take on f4 and we get some structure like this one. I don't think there's any reason for white to be better here. Like, I just stick the queen on d5 or something, and I don't have a weak c6 pawn. I traded off what would have been your better bishop versus my bad bishop. So I don't think e4 really makes sense as a plan, unless we have black has played c6 first. So I don't like rook e1 here. Um, but white sort of made an all-star positional decision at this point. And see if anybody can figure out what the best move is and why. So people are asking about f3, but this, I just don't think this is going to work. Bishop e3, and I'm going to c5 you in the face. Like, this is exactly the kind of position where this pawn on f3 is egregiously misplaced. Like, after, first of all, after it takes d4, I just straight up take a piece. And you're really wondering why this pawn isn't on f2, which would obviously make your life a lot easier. So I really think this, touching the f pawn feels very skeptical to me in these positions. Um... At least if you want to play f f three e four always feels like the wrong plan somehow. Um, I'll give you guys like two more minutes before I show what move I think is best and why. Preventing c five. I don't think you want to prevent c five forcefully. I think you want to prevent c five by making the structure nice for it. Like here, if I go rook c eight, I'm sort of think these pieces are stupid. D4 is hanging, which cause, which will force you to pay some attention to it. And furthermore, I don't believe you're stopping C5. I believe I'm going to play C5 next move and claim that you have put your pieces on bizarre squares for no reason. Um, so 
I don't love that. But yeah, uh, the move that White played in the game was knight d3, which I think is a real all-star move for a few reasons. First off, it clears the e5 square, which uh, which means that knight e6 can be comfortably met with bishop e5, and there's not a great way to harass this um, to harass uh, the bishop. So uh, this bishop is very nicely placed on e5 because knight d7 is uh, is met with knight takes d5. I think knight g4 is semi-possible, and we'll see some positions like that as the, in the way the game progressed. But in addition to that, this knight on d3, if we think about this knight on e5 and what utility it was really serving here, basically it just looks pretty. What we'd love to do is slam into c6, but we saw that our direct attempt that Narayan had come up with with knight b5 to do that was met with knight e6, and this variation didn't work for white. So if we're not actually going to slam knight c6, I think the knight's pretty well placed on d3 instead. This clears this bishop open. Additionally, what strategic move would white like to play next? White has two very powerful moves that he could play on the next move. One's very strategic and one's very direct. So what would white play if we had a move? So everyone sees the direct one. Uh, knight b5, like if black plays, I don't know, h6 or something, knight b5 just wins the game on the spot. At this point, because this knight on e5 is out of the way, we are collapsing on the c7 score, plain and simple. At this point, this move works. So for example, in the game, I played c6, which is a typical move in this structure to keep everything closed. It's not like I was wildly concerned about... Um, about blocking in my bishop when it was already blocked by the pawn on d5. And here, the reason I played c6, if I recall, I was considering playing knight e5 and then like c6, but what I disliked here was this move e4. And as we discussed, um, whenever black has played c6, the move e4 for white makes a lot more sense. And I disliked that in this position here, uh, the e file is now blocked, while by starting with c6, my thought was that. This is now not working for white because he's going to drop material thanks to the bishop a3 trick. So uh, that was my rationale behind c6. It was incorrect. Knight, knight e6 followed by c6 was a better move. And, um, or knight e6, let's put it this way. Knight e6 was a better move. And we'll we'll see why later. But uh, what should white do now? I've, I've played my move to stop knight b5. But strategically speaking, what is white's next positional decision to make? I think he made a very good one. Yes, Ariane, you want to share with us? Okay. Uh... So here I thought I thought before. This is a very good move. That pawn on b3 is misplaced. It blocks the queen. And most importantly, what is your plan in the coming moves? We can possibly start a minority attack with like a4, b5. I don't, and think, another you, thing, I don't even hmm? think you need a4. I think you can throw b5. And yeah, b5. And it also stops a potential idea of c5 that might come. Yeah, I mean, keep in mind, like, I could have played c5 this move and chose not to, but, like, here, I, I think this here we can't because knight a4 and the pawn will drop, and that's not good. But b4, basically, I think b4, it's very direct. Black wants to, white wants to smash through with b5 uh, when black can't play c5 comfortably. So I continued with knight e6, bishop e5, and now knight g4. Uh, so... On a scale of 1 to 10, how much do we care about black taking this bishop on e5? Ariane says 0. If I was saying, well, give, let's put it this way. Are we going to retreat this bishop? <laughs> yeah, we're clearly not retreating this bishop. So, but what we should think about is that knight takes e5 is very likely coming. The knight on g4 probably doesn't have much other future. So uh, that being the case, the first thing we want to think about is which do, piece do we want to take back with, which is not an easy decision. Do we want to preserve the pawn structure as it presently is, or do we want to change it with d takes e5? And then uh, once we've figured out which way we want to take back, we should sort of sculpt our game plan around that. So what should we play here and why? And also keep in mind, we've already decided that b5 is our most natural option. Uh, and that's the way that we sort of would like to continue. So that's the first move we should consider and then think about what happens after that. So 
So guys, if you want to play B, if you just tell me B5, that doesn't tell me anything. There's variations you're going to want to have to calculate. You want to figure out what's Black going to do after B5. Is he because he has three options? He can take it. He can play C5. He can ignore it. All of them are interesting, and you want to have some idea about how the game goes. Uh, you should really be thinking about this stuff before pulling the trigger on a move like B5, which clearly provokes some kind of conflict. So someone has given me B takes E5, Knight takes E5, B takes C6. Then after Knight takes C6, it's time to resign. So we want to slow down, be careful, and yeah. So someone has called for H3 and then G4. Now, of course, after H3, we're going to... Um, Black's going to take on E5, and you have to take with the pawn. So this kind of position, you have to take some understanding. But I think here Black should be doing reasonably well. And the reason is after queen d7, I don't think you're sufficiently able to attack the d5 pawn in time. Uh, so for example, like a typical idea would be b5 and forget that we can take it. But let's say we go b5, c5. This structure here, I think, is an absolute train wreck for white. If black is allowed to just play like d4 and stick his rooks on d8 and c8 and start shoving the central pawns, you have a horrible position. So... The only way you can justify a structure like this one is if you are in time to cause direct problems. So, for example, okay, so Araji is suggesting f4 here. I mean, that's probably the best move, but um, I'm still not wildly impressed with it. Black can even just play f5 himself, probably, is not the dumbest thing I've ever seen. I don't really think you want to take this. Now, again, this open e-file makes you regret pushing f4. But if you don't take it, I will play d4 next, and this knight will not have the e4 square. And it feels like black has a very reasonable position. But this all comes down to the fact that here, we're too slow to target the d5 pawn. So, for example, if we play the move b5, if we were to go for a variation like this one, I think strategically white generally should be in trouble, but after knight f4, white is too fast. Black is he was one tempo too short to defend the bishop, and as a result, the d-pawn cannot move and will get taken. So uh, also here, of course, there's a valid idea that you can take with the knight. But if you play h3, then now this is the worst possible version, because you can't take with the knight, now b4 will hang, and after d takes e5, queen d7, I think black has a very reasonable position. So... Um, Let's see if we can try to make b5 work. Think about after b5, what's black going to play in response? I mean, what's the most critical move for sure? Now, if we can get a structure with b5, b takes c6, or with b5, c takes b5, knight takes b5, in both cases, I think white has to be pretty happy. The real question is what happens if b5, c5? That's a structure that we have to be a bit scared of. Okay, so Jessica has an interesting idea to play b5, c5, and then e4. So this just blows up the center, and you certainly are going to want to calculate this in advance um, instead of just sort of going for it, because it sort of seems like you've just kind of guessed. But this, I don't necessarily, intuitively, I don't think, I don't see a reason to believe that white's going to be better equipped to fight for the center than black will. I think this rook on c1 will end up not great, and the rook on e8 is better, and, like, black's pieces are fighting. So, like, here, let's say we take this one. I imagine you probably will take with the knight. And, of course, this is a stupidly complicated position with, like, pieces flying everywhere, but I don't think I mind black's position. Like, say we go knight takes d4, e takes d5, and... Maybe bishop g5. Black's pieces are starting to look very scary and active. Uh, Ar Arian, you say you see something for white after for black after e4. Yeah, what would you like black to play? Knight takes d4, but isn't this guy hanging? Yeah, I think that we don't want to hang g4 like that, but. Taking this and knight takes d4 looks okay for black to me. This seems like it should be fine. Um, but so, uh, Narayan has something a little bit more interesting. And he says b5, c3, e5. But the e3. But the uh, but here, Narayan, you, your line you gave c4, but this is just bad. We take the knight and this game's over. So, um, let's say we have this position after b5 and c5 on the board. 
Here, White has a very important move, and it's really a comparison problem. And this was the first time my and here my opponent started to make a mistake, and it's it's not an easy decision at all. Uh, and I think my opponent's move was the most natural one, but um, but uh, yeah, what are we gonna do here? Okay, you don't. All right, Raya, you uh, you have an idea? Let's see. Okay, so. I'm thinking about knight d5 as a possibility. This, I'd be shocked if this works. What do you want here? e4. And can I take this one? Yeah, and I want pawn d5 here as my thing. And so you're claiming this works for white? Yeah. I struggle to believe you. Take, take, take. What do you want? You're going to end up down a piece here. Yeah, I think this was too fancy for us on good. Um, okay, Eric, you have a variation you want to share? Okay, so uh, I tried to go knight of four, so then the d4 pawn will be defended. And so if he takes on d4, then I will take back. And if he takes on f4, I think I could just take there. And I feel like white's doing okay. Yeah, white might be better here. Um, I wonder if he can take this one, though. And then bishop c5. And I'm a bit worried about the counter play. Um, but so Aryan is suggesting we can take e5 here, but this was sort of the point is that after d takes e5, I, I don't think this is working for black. He's too slow to, to bolster the d5 pawn in time. Um, otherwise he would be better, I think. Like, for example, like if after take, he could go queen d7, rook a d8 in one move, I think white would be almost lost. Like it would just be such a bad position already, but we're not in time, the d5 pawn will drop. So, um, Knight f4 is the second best move, and it's not totally stupid. Um, this kind of thing with either bishop takes d4 or knight takes e6 first and then bishop takes d4 is probably not so bad for white. Uh, but I think he has something stronger. Like, I, I'm not at all convinced. Like, you know, this line here from Eric was, he was saying he thought white was better. I'm not sure. Uh, this doesn't look totally clear to me. It just looks like, I don't know, if I... Um, and then someone else was giving this line, but here there's going to be e5 and it starts to get messy. Um, I don't know. This is not that convincing to me. It's, it's a decent line for white, but I don't, I think it's not that clear. There is a better move. Um, so what should we play? First thing to think about is what's the most thematic and critical move, uh, structurally speaking, and when can we make that work or not? Okay, let's start with this. Examine all checks and captures. That's a good tenet we should think about. So first question we should think about is what happens if we take this pawn? Uh, how do we expect black to take back? Okay, a lot of people are saying pawn. And here, what do we play now? We've got these two hanging pawns that we want to attack. How can we attack them? But be careful because uh worth black is actually threatening c4 which i believe almost wins a piece maybe wins a piece i guess there would be h3 or something but yeah Ariane, you want to share with us your idea okay so here just e3 okay. attack this knight this knight is attacking this knight makes a lot of sense because we're forcing it to make up its mind. What black really wants to do is take this one, but the problem is he's not in time. The d5 pawn is dropping. Yes. I mean, you can play knight c7, but you end up giving white this c6 pawn and white is clearly better here. I mean, after d after something like d4 and we get a structure like this where we have this far advanced pass pawn on c6, the the question is no longer is white better. The question is how much better is he? I think it's quite a bit. I mean, we go queen d3, rook fd1, the pieces are playing very easily, and uh, this pawn on c6 is extremely powerful. So 
when we play DC5, BC5, E3, Black just has no great way to solve this problem. Like here, if he takes this, there's, um, there's an issue with uh, the D5 pawn hanging, but what else can you do? This knight is under attack. There's no other move. Like you just something's gonna drop. If knight f6, we can take it and go knight a4. And this is the kind of position where we get to play against these hanging pawns where black was too slow to defend them. In the event of c4, we can go knight c5. Uh, and then the d5 pawn is going to drop. And then the c4 pawn is going to drop and black's whole face is gonna fall apart. So this is just not working for black. Um, have I just blundered like an idiot, or do I have some nefarious idea in mind that you guys have not come up with yet? It's pretty clear we want to play e3 to attack this knight and bolster the center one. The question is, do we want to play e3 right now, or do we want to take on c5 first? This is a comparison to be made, and you have to think about candidate moves and interesting ideas. I can't make a poll, but all right. So this line we just saw with DC5, BC5, E3, 95, 95 was basically like really bad for black. So do we just think that's all there is to it or after DC5 is there more to it than that? All right, DC5, what's black gonna take back with guys? All right, we already talked about B takes C5 guys. It doesn't work after e3. What is a good position? All right, capital B then. Yeah, so bishop takes c5. And I think this is actually a really powerful move. And the reason is that if you take this bishop, now all of a sudden this guy is trapped. And now e3 doesn't make sense anymore. Like the, this guy has nowhere to go. The knight on d3 was absolutely necessary to defend it. So the question after bishop takes c5 becomes, what is white's next move? It's actually not that easy to come up with a good one. Black's pieces are jumping to life reasonably fast now. What does white play here? I actually think you're already worse. All right, Ryo wants e3. Um, we'll get to that later. Uh, so the best move in my opinion was to play e3 here. And I believe the reason my opponent didn't do this is because after knight takes e5 and uh, knight takes e5, here I have the option to play c takes d4 and force a symmetrical structure where white was unable to play d takes c5 and blast open the d file to target the d5 pawn. Still, I think white's better here. The knight on e5 is very powerful. It looks nice and active. It can slam to c6 at any moment. The bishop on b7 is passive. Uh, I think white's a bit better here. It's not the end of this world for black. He's, he's a little worse game goes on but white should be slightly better i suspect that white saw this line and thought why don't i take on c5 first and then go e3 so that black will not have the option to play c takes d4 and indeed in this position here after e3 we notice that this knight is attacked and the d file is going to be blasted open in theory to uh to make the d5 pawn a big weakness that has to be defended but all right guys this comes down to some strategic understanding, and there's two very key themes at play here. What should black play? Aradia, that looks very skeptical. You say 95, 95, queen c7. Can I not go bishop takes d5? Maybe there's rook ad8 then. This looks incredibly sketchy. Um, let me think. Give the old man some time. Okay, but you're saying f4 here. Well, it's not going to play f4. Bishop e3 is in the air. So uh, what if I go knight c6? I think the game's already more or less over. I think this is completely crushing. Now we crash through on d5. All right, let's not do that. Black has two options here, but I found the best one. All right, Jessica Hyatt, you have an interesting idea, and Narayan, Narayan as well. So um, let me ask Narayan what he has in mind for this one. Okay, so I'm thinking that knight takes e3 because 
Um, if if the knight can't take the bishop, it's kind of risky because after the knight takes, you get the knight, the bishop, and the queen active. Um, and so now here you you gain you gain a pawn, you gain one point. So this is an imbalanced material position. Who do you think is better and why? I honestly think that black is better because his rooks can get on open files. Well, white's pieces are not that well coordinated. They could be better. Yeah. Honestly. So black is doing very well. here. So first of all, before anyone gets all fancy with knight takes c5 and looks at the stupid complications like this, let me just, this is easy enough. The bishop on e5 hangs. Um, but uh there's whenever we're talking about positions where one side has an extra exchange or is playing with like a rook against two minor pieces there's two questions you want to ask yourself the first question and the most important one by far is how good are the rooks uh if the rooks are good the exchange sacrifice will almost always fail if the rooks are good two pieces for a rook might not be that great here are these rooks this rook comes to c8 and the rooks are fantastic the second question which i think in this case is even more important is do the minor pieces have anchored squares to sit on and the answer here is a resounding no and i think the real reason white's position is so bad is this pawn on b5 if this pawn were back on b2 we would have a completely different game so for example the game continued with knight takes c1 aiming to you know pressure the d file and then there came rook c8 imagine this exact same position with the pawn on b2 this knight on c3 would not need any defending. We could go knight b3, knight b5, fight for knight d4 like that. Uh, it would make perfect sense for white, and there would not be not there wouldn't be like hanging pieces in the position like we're about to see. So uh, at this point, white's already slightly worse for sure. It's not easy for him to even find a move. Like if knight takes d5, rook c1 is working, and if bishop d5. I think this fails as well. Takes, and now if knight d5, rook c1, if queen d5, we take, and rook c5, I think. That's what I calculated. If rook d1, rook d8, check. And then at the end of all of this, there are too many hanging white pieces, I believe, uh, was my calculation. So, um, so he cannot take on d5, but the problem is for white that he does not have anchored squares for his knights. Uh, and so... Um, for example, in the game, white played knight 1e2, and now black, after black's next move, he basically just wins. So, what are we gonna do? Okay, always remember, what's your worst place piece? You have to get into the game at some point. So... Yeah, a couple people have got this. This move, queen g5, is absurdly powerful. Where does this bishop even go? So, for example, let's say we go bishop f4 and black takes it. I suppose taking with the rook makes the most sense, but this is exactly the kind of position I'm talking about. This knight in c3 is not anchored. Stick this pawn back on b2, let white play knight takes f4, and it's a very different game. Like, white might be better, even. Like, the d5 pawn will drop, and then there's some case that the two pieces could be as good as the rooks. Still, I'm not convinced it would be bad for black, but it, it's clearly, like, a huge difference that this pawn on b2 would make. So, um, say we go rook takes e f4, and now I think the move is queen e5. And what do we do about these two stupid knights? Um, so, Sanyana is asking about f6. It's a much less active version of the same move. Like... For example, here, say we go bishop d4. Like, this position, yeah, the queen is now not nearly as well placed, and yeah, it's, I'm sure it's not a terrible move, but queen g5 is basically lights out. So we go take, take, and queen e5, and there's nothing to do about these two stupid hanging knights because this pawn is up on b5. Black's rooks are fantastic, and white doesn't have anchored squares for his pieces. Let's say white plays queen d2. What do we do to finish this game off? couple of people have spot this well spotted tactically just checks and captures all the way through Chekovich, Chekovich, d4 check will come black wins so uh that seems easy enough 
Uh, in the game, uh, there's also, for example, after queen g5, bishop d4, and again, after something like take, take, and just queen e3, like, white's knights end up preposterous and will just get taken. Like, uh, it takes and we're losing material directly. So, um, yeah, this is exactly the kind of position I mean where it's, uh, where the lack of anchored squares, even here, like, if this pawns back on b2 and white goes knight d4, I don't know, is white even worse? Probably not. Like, knights are pretty good there. But as is, I think it's gone. So, um, so instead, white played bishop d6, and there came rook c d8, bishop b4, d4, and uh, the whole position blows up in white's face, and it all falls apart. After bishop takes b7, like, now we start to see that the rooks are getting good, and also white's lack of anchored pieces here. Uh, queen b3 was a mistake, but white was already lost anyway. What's the last move of the game, or the last relevant move of the game, just to highlight just what happens when you don't have anchored pieces? Slow down, be careful, guys. It's one move and white's absolutely done. It's actually quite a simple move. Yeah, Ryo, you got it. You want to share with us, last one? Yeah, really just take me five. Nothing more complicated than that. What the heck are we going to do? This knight is pinned. You cannot defend it with your queen because then your bishop will be under attack. If you play bishop f3, you have broken the coordination to f7 and knight d4 comes and you're going to lose a small amount of material. Um, like, if you play rook e1, you've also broken the connection to f7 and knight d4 comes. You can try rook f2 like you did in the game, but hello, bishop on b4 unanchored, c2, go stop this pawn. It's like white completely collapses because all the pieces are on loose squares and it all comes down to like none of them. Like the fact that white's knights and just did not have anchored squares this whole time changed the evaluation of the position tremendously and gave black basically a winning position. I was expecting queen v1 during the game, which is a bit more challenging because by keeping the f1 rook defended, queen takes b5 is not a thing because of knight takes c3 when white is... I mean, I think I actually was planning on doing this anyway, and then or this even here with queen c4 is still very difficult for white thanks to the unanchored pieces. Like, this knight on c3, like, a5 is a huge threat to just win the knight, but, like, go find a square for this knight. It, it, they don't really exist. Um, like, if knight e4, the bishop is going to get trapped, and the the whole thing just sort of stinks. I think c2 is also very good. And then just still playing something like this. Um, this The lack of anchored pieces is just so bad. I think the computer found some line rook b1, and we go knight c5, hitting the bishop on b7 and opening up an attack on the knight on e2, which forces simplifications. And here, uh, black will pick up a third pawn on a2, and I think that... The two bishops are fi are finally good, but I think black just has too many pawns, uh, and that should be good enough to win the game. And the king is cut off and seems good enough. Anyhow, I thought this was an interesting game. Lots of strategic and dynamic themes uh, in the game you played this, and yeah, after C2, I, there's no real need to go any further. Um, so uh, yeah, I think that's good. Uh, good session, everybody. Uh, this was a challenging game in a lot of ways. Lots of you know subtleties, and uh, but also some calculation and understanding. Anyhow, good stuff. I'll open up for like a few questions, just general Q&A, uh, but we'll probably call it quits in a minute or two. So any final questions or thoughts anyone wants to share?